I live in peace. They think helping me every day. I can live in peace. I can sleep in water. They heat. That's the count of life the Liberian Civil Wars have forced 58-year-old Vitor Duo to live. Manan Duo is a victim of the informal St. Peter's Union Church massacre in 1990, where over 600 people were murdered by soldiers with Samuel Duo's AFL in what is believed to be one of the biggest massacres of the wars. Duo says she and her family were taking refuge in the church that Judas Sunday evening in 1990 when soldiers forced their way into the church and slashed up a red cross flag that had been hoisted above the gate of the church. The people crying, crying, killing, shooting, poor life, gone. They use all those things they want the people. Manandua says her husband and his brother were shot dead in front of her and her three young children, Rose, Richard and Augustine. Just like Rose, Richard and Augustine, who are pictured here, are grown up. Their mother records, after the soldiers killed many of the men in the church that night, the little came for the women. They say you collect money. We will not care you collect money. They start collecting money. They collect all the money, then they give it to them. I hear yeah, the shooting sound. Right here. That is my old way. They shoot me and fall down. They start shooting over all. I can't go and shoot that ball. They hate that move. They only my own head. I only my daughter on her nose. They go and shoot that right here. When I do lost her conscience. I fall down. I don't know where I'm going on now. I wake up the next day, I see myself water, draw everything or hanging on me to carry hospital. When she regained her consciousness, Duo couldn't find her children. The children there were, nothing happened to them. They collect them, they carry them to carry them, they put them in one room, they start feeding them. I was crying and the white woman hold my hand. I said, now go check for your children. Say so you're crying for the children. I go in the room there. I see the one or in the room. I saw the one or on bed already because he fell. Now 32, Richard was free when his leg was badly injured. Doctors told his mother they would have caught it off. I start crying. They start packing me again. The white people they say, don't cry. I don't want to experience it. I'm going to go there again. <laughs> I start crying. They say, they start packing me. They say, no, they will not call the ball full. So I go, I lay down on the bed. They pan and they say, can, can you go see your son? I go down, and then they finish call the ball full. I start crying again. Manandua says she's been having sleeplessness for more than 28 years since the bloody incident and sometimes sleeps in water to relieve herself from the pains which she says causes heat in her body. When I start sweating the water, start, I can sleep in water. My hand can go up. You see me with towel. I can be in three towels, wiping myself every day. I can be sweating the heat that in me and I is it, Papa. Come on, baby, today again. I'm today again. <laughs> Manandua says she struggles to find money for the treatment she needs for the bullet wounds she still carries on her body. No money. I go to that clinic, the country that time. The people who can take gunshot when they leave on you, they can take it off. I go to the people, no money. They charge me 10,000, no money. Richard uses crutches, but he says he refuses to let the massacre defend his life. A father of one, he's a member of Liberia's amputee football team, but the money he makes from playing football as a disabled athlete is unable to take care of his daily needs. His mother says her son has been helped by the Catholic Church, but the rest of the family fends for itself and makes large ups and downs. Manandua says Rose, the eldest of the three, sells used clothes, while Augustine sells women's footwear, including slippers in red light. Without their husband and father, life has been tough for this family. None of the hundreds of people who were injured in the church here have seen any help from government for their physical suffering or financial losses suffered because of the deaths of their loved ones. 
to the TRC recommendations demand reparations for all victims of Liberia's civil wars. None of the previous Saudi administration nor the current government has been willing to implement them. But now, with the UN and the US Congress calling on the government to implement the TRC recommendations, President Ria is facing immense pressure to act. Liberian justice campaigner Adam Temster is unhappy that the Liberian government is so far ignoring calls for the implementation of the report. It shows non-compliance by the government and the government need to be serious about these things because we are talking about coming from conflict. Those things that should be used to heal the wound of the conflict are not being prioritized by both past government and present government. So it's a frustration. Temster warns that time is running out from an undo and other war victims. And times are passing by, most of the victims might die. Most of people who should get direct reparation might no longer be around. It's become frustrating. But let me let you know that sustaining the advocacy is, 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 is a non-stop process. One obvious obstacle will be raising money. Liberia's government is one of the world's poorest and it is already facing dire economic challenges. Economist David Fahad says he does not think the government has money to pay reparations. I think the first thing we need to do is to, to bring in the, 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 the war crime code and see those people who are responsible, directly responsible for the foolishness went. Some of them may have some, some good money and then the government can, 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 can take out those money from them and do what, what needs to be done. But the government of its own, I don't think the government has any money to, to pay reparations. It will be something good to do, to, to assist people who lost everything. I lost everything myself, all I worked for. Meanwhile, for survivors like Vitura Dua and her family, relief can't come soon enough. I want to get benefit from my people there as well. Let me go to hospital, I get benefit, so I'll be free. This report was produced by Power TV in collaboration with new narratives as part of the West Africa Justice Reporting Project. I'm Anthony Stevens reporting.